Hello everyone and in this video we are going to take a look at how we can extract the terrain mesh data. So just to give you a background, I downloaded the Mars Landscape 3D asset from the asset store and we have a terrain here. So when I wanted to do some custom tessellation on this, I created a tessellation shader and assigned it to a material. When I assigned the material to this terrain, it gave me an error that we cannot use that material or a shader. Then I basically looked at the shaded wireframe mode and Unity performs some basic uh, tessellation itself and it has its own algorithm. Uh, this can be controlled by the pixel error here so I can control it but I still wanted some more control on the terrain. So I could have actually gone to the asset store but I thought that this perhaps has to be pretty simple because the terrain uh, should ideally be only uh, based on the mesh's uh, height displacement or the vertex displacement in the y-axis. So I started looking at uh, the API for the terrain and here if you see in this script, the terrain has a sample height function which samples the height at the given position defined in the world space. Which means that if I had to project a plane on this, I'll quickly create a plane. I'm going to scale it up. So if I just put a plane right here, and if I sample the world space position of this plane, let's go to the wireframe mode. I could actually, for each vertex, get the height from the terrain mesh. So logically this was fine, and I had to script it down. So let's take a quick look at the script. I created a terrain mesh script in which I took the input of a terrain and also I took the input of an object to which I have to copy the mesh data to. Now basically if you see, whenever Unity has to render some mesh, it creates a mesh filter which contains a mesh and hence I knew for a fact that the mesh will contain vertices and I had to just replace the vertices. So what you can do is, you can actually get the actual bounds of the terrain or you can just scale up the plane visually. So if you go to the top viewport and if you scale up and align the mesh like this plane, you will be able to sample the vertices. So the next thing was to access the mesh of the of this object. And you can access it by using the mesh filter and the mesh basically. Next, I created a list of new vertices, which was an empty list. So I iterated through each and every vertex in this plane because I wanted to sample the height for each vertex in this plane. Uh, I queried the vertex position, but as the vertex position is in local space and we want to sample it in the world space, I had to multiply it with the local to world matrix. Once I got the world space position of every vertex, I simply uh, use the sample height function and passed on the world space position. Now, I had made this change because I was using a high density mesh that I had got from 3D Studio Max, but for this purpose, I'm just going to switch it back to Y. So what happens is, you know for a fact that in Unity, it is Y axis up, which means if I have to give any displacement in the height, I have to change the position in the Y axis. So once I change the position in the Y axis, I simply access the vertices of the mesh of the plane and set the new vertices. As you see, it takes an array, so I had to convert the list to an array. And then we recalculate normals, tangents, and bounds. So this was pretty much it. What I'm gonna do next is, I'm just going to run the script. So we have this plane, and I'm just going to say, assign, align it here, right here. And if I run this, let's go to the scene mode. It gives me this kind of an error because we have a weird scale in Y, which is 24. I scale it up uniformly. Now, if I was to just switch off the terrain. So this is how you basically get the mesh data out. But if you see now there is a slight problem. It is not as, uh, detailed as we wanted. So 
The next thing that I wanted to do was instead of using a plane from Unity, I basically made some heavy density uh, meshes in uh, 3D Studio Max. So now if you see, we have a couple of uh, meshes here and they're all plain. So the subdivisions will be four by four, eight by eight, 16 by 16, 32 by 32, 64 by 64 and 128 by 128. So I thought that maybe this one, which is 64 by 64 would be a good idea. There you go. Now with this plane, there is only one issue that because it's imported from 3D Studio Max and if we see the local uh, axis, we see that it is Z up. So it can be easily tackled. First of all, let me just quickly uh, switch the terrain back on. So I'm just going to scale it again. Now from the last time when we copied the mesh data, we know that for a fact that we don't need to scale it up in this axis. Now you see clearly that because this is Z up, I'm just going to assign one as the scale. Let's go to the top view. Okay. And it has some kind of an edge right here. So that is fine. So this is the terrain and I'm going to assign this object, which is named 64 by 64. And all we need to do is we need to run the script, but before that, we need to make sure that instead of moving the vertex in the Y axis now, we move it in the Z axis because we have imported the plane from 3D Studio Max, which has Z up. Now, if I run this and I switch off the terrain, so let's switch it off. There we go. We have successfully extracted the mesh data and applied it to the custom um, mesh. The next thing that you would like to do is save this because once you get it out of the play mode, it'll revert back again. So to save this, I went online and found a nice script. This is on GitHub and I'm going to share it with you. So this is Unity Mesh Saver and how you run it is basically go to the mesh filter and right click on the component and say save mesh. So if I just go to the mesh filter, click right here. Uh, I mean, right click here. I say save mesh as new instance and I'm going to just name it as um, new instance dot asset say save. Now once I'm out of the play mode, I can just switch off the terrain. Now the plane basically flattens again. And I'm just simply going to say for this mesh, I don't need this one, but I need the 64 by 64 new instance. And there we go. I can assign it a terrain material now, which will give me some displacement. So it basically has the same color and texture. Uh, I still need to create a good uh, displacement map. So right now, just for the sake of it, I'm going to use this map. So you see how it displaces right here in the center of the crater. And it tessellates as well. So once I start moving closer to the mesh, it starts tessellating the mesh. Uh, yep, so I could have used a higher density mesh and if you want, we can just quickly do that as well. So I'm just going to get the terrain back again. I'm going to get the 128 by 128 uh, mesh, which is right here. Delete the rest of them because we don't need them. And now for a fact, I know that it's 170 by 170. And you just put it back to zero and zero and zero. Let this be minus 90, which is fine. And I put the terrain back on. I'm going to then assign this 120 by 120 object right here. Hit the play button. And I'm just going to put the terrain off. I'm going to select this, right click, save mesh as new instance and it's going to be 128 by 128 instance right in the marsh landscape and save switch off the terrain in this i'm going to assign the 128 instance and now if you see 
we have got a lot of detail here but we may choose to not have the detail because once we zoom in closer to it as it is it's going to get tessellated so it's up to us what we select i would specifically recommend use this one because you can add your own displacement map uh if i was supposed to give it a displacement right here just like i did earlier So this is the terrain. So this is the basic difference between using a 64 by 64 versus a 128 by 128 mesh. So this is how I actually created the terrain mesh extraction tool. And you can actually find some better versions on the SH store. But this solves my purpose. And uh, I could now actually assign some good displacement maps. So that is it for the video. And thank you so much for watching.